Dear colleagues, from time to time I do get the question on the multi-tenancy architecture of SAP Business by Design and where it differs from the traditional architectures that you normally know from the SAP world. If we start off with them, uh, and that is the architecture of, for example, SAP NetWeaver 760, you see that the customer's data is organized in clients, or some of you may know the German term Mandant. Also in this concept, we already have one area of overarching information that is non-client specific data that can include information like single sign-on capabilities, connection information, error locks, and so on and so on. Many of SAP's large users use this so-called client code zero to standardize certain capabilities that they want to enforce across multiple clients. That Web application server capability sits on top of SAP's HANA database in which you can run multiple schemas. If we now look at business by design and its multi-tenancy architecture, then let's first talk about what multi-tenancy is. Multi-tenancy is a race for economies of scale. So you try to share as many system resources as possible because you want to lower your cost of lifecycle management, but without violating the principle of tenant data isolation. So what we did was we took a copy of SAP's NetWeaver architecture and we removed, first of all, those capabilities that we would not need urgently to run a business by design system. Then we extended the capability of the client concept, which means we introduce the principle or the tenant awareness into each and every capability of our web application server, SAP NetWeaver. At the same time, we made sure that we reuse components whenever that is possible. Some people have asked me, well, how do you judge now whether you have a true multi-tenancy system in front of you or not? And my typical answer is, imagine you built a certain application. And now after a while, you found uh, that you want to do an improvement. Therefore, you built a new version. You have a bug fix for that. And the question is, if you now have 100 customers on that system, how often do you need to apply this hotfix? If the answer is, I need to apply the hotfix 100 times because I have 100 customers, then obviously I wouldn't describe this as a multi-tenancy system. If the answer is, I have to apply it just once, well then, it is a multi-tenancy system. The challenge for us was to nevertheless allow for maximum flexibility within a client. So despite the principle of having just one set of code, which is served across all or which serves all of the tenants. We invented capabilities so that each client can have its own code extensions. That makes the multi-tenancy concept of business by design so powerful. Therefore, multi-tenancy is first of all a capability of the web application server and with that said the critical part is the application lifecycle management the underlying database should be capable to work or should be capable of handling a multi-schema environment that has multiple advantages but that is not absolutely necessary the next question would be, well, what is now the optimal number of tenants? Should my ambition be to run 1,000 tenants per system? Well, as the slide indicates, um, and if we want to compare such a system with a bus, and the people on the bus then are, or the seats in the bus are the tenants, we can have small buses, medium buses, and very large buses. And whether you now take a very large bus or a small bus, is predominantly a function of the risk, the CPU load that you require for a specific tenant, and the size of the tenants. If I, for example, have one tenant with 800 users on it, then it might be a good idea to add another 20 smaller tenants to that system 
but to keep the number then in that range. If at the same time I'm talking about a system with test tenants, so tenants which are only used from time to time, then I can easily run 60, 90, 120 tenants on such one system and that is perfectly okay. The number of tenants is therefore predominantly a function also of the underlying database server. Currently we are using HANA machines uh, for the production environment with three terabytes of main memory so we can run a large number of tenants on it but as said we try to find a good compromise because and here the example of the bus works again if you need certain times for example to apply hotfixes if you need certain times to apply new releases then obviously at that time the entire bus stops if this is a small bus maybe 15 customers are affected if this would be one of these super large buses like here on the right then it could be hundreds of customers therefore the optimal size of tenants varies from system to system and is predominantly a question of the composition of customers which you want to run in this environment for sap and business by design the multi-tenancy concept has worked extremely well we were able to lower our costs significantly in the last year since 2010 when we introduced the multi-tenancy concept and that also allows us to have a very competitive price offering in the market today with SAP Business by Design. With that, thanks a lot for your attention and talk to you soon.